Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it, hope your day's going really well. I'm playing around in Luminar 4, doing a workflow, and this is kind of a subtle, beautiful sunset kind of workflow. Um, I took a photo in Germany. Let me just show you the photo. Here you go. Uh, this was a couple of years ago in Rotenburg, Germany. Beautiful little town. And, you know, I love this scene. I absolutely just adore that kind of architecture and that kind of scene, really. I just find it incredibly beautiful. But as you can tell, uh, it was past sunset. There was really no sunset at all. And, uh, you know, I was left with, uh, with this photo. Now, that's an unedited JPEG, but, of course, I had to go edit because that's what I like to do. Um, and I also wanted to make it a nice-looking sunset. And that's the beauty of Illuminar 4 is you just say, boom, I want a new sunset, and you have a new sunset. It's that quick. It's that easy. You've seen it. You may have it now. Um, I'm going to walk through the workflow with a few filters, show you how I got here. So let me reset these things, and we'll get going. Okay, first things first, I went into the crop tool right here. Whoops, if I could hit it, hitting it too fast. Uh, here we go, uh, 16 by nine, and I just slid that up, and then I scooted it over a little bit. I wanted to get rid of that building on the side, and I wanted to make sure that these little guys were still in the photo, but I wanted to get rid of that stuff. So I think that all looks good. You hit done, and then you are finished with the crop tool. And if you're gonna replace this guy, I personally, um, in my experience so far, I prefer to do this guy first. So even though I generally follow the order of the filters through the four different tabs, if I'm doing a sky, I'll go straight to Creative tab, get AI Sky Replacement, just click Sky Selection. I'm gonna load a custom image, and now I gotta go find it. So it's in my skies, clouds and skies. Here we go, and it is this one. And you say Open, and you'll see here in just a second, it'll drop it in, and it, it lines up great. I mean, it really does. Now here's something I like to do, and that is you go to an advanced settings, and there's this sky defocus. And if, if I drag it, you can see it gets really blurry. I'm not trying to do that kind of thing. Um, I'm gonna do something gentle and kind of subtle. So like a seven, I'm just trying to soften it up a little bit, but uh, I'm already liking the photo. I think it's actually much improved. So next up, I pop over here, and this is where I start to go in order in terms of how the filters appear. And I've got to look at my notes to see what I did. So I warmed it up a little bit, about a 10 there, and about an eight on tint. And something I like to do with sunsets is give them a little bit of that tint to the right. I'll often take the temperature to the left, but this one I went to the right to give it a little bit of warmth. And then of course, a smart contrast, which is an absolutely just lovely filter. Did that at about 52. If you want to learn about smart contrast, I have a video right there. Okay, now I'm going into the AI Enhance, and I'm just kind of going through it. And here I use the first one, AI Accent, and I went to, you know, like 38 or so. Now here's the thing. Um, instead of using this, what I wanted to do is really brighten the foreground. So if I reset that um, and go back here to Light, I can also just lift the shadows, which kind of brightens the foreground. It's a very similar effect. Um, however, I, uh, if I could reset that, um, I opted to go with the AI Accent because I just like that... Um, that it's, I don't know, it's kind of the easy button. Visually, I don't know in this photo if there's a big difference between lifting the shadows or just using AI Accent, but generally speaking, AI Accent seems to impact the color a little bit and the contrast and things like that, so be aware it is different than just lifting shadows, just to be clear. In this photo, it didn't seem to visually have a big difference, but generally speaking, it is different. Okay, now I wanted to do a little AI structure, so I'm going like mid-30s here, and I'm giving a little bit of boost as well. And the thing I love about this filter is if you look at the sky, which I defocused and kind of softened up, nothing happened. I mean, that's what's great about AI structure and why I like it so much. It's really doing, I think, a great job of just uh, giving me a little bit of crunchiness in the foreground, you know, which is the cobblestones and the buildings, which is exactly where I want the, uh, the crunchiness. But this guy got left alone, so I just I love AI structure. It's, if you're not using it, I, I, I highly recommend that you get started with it. Okay, next was color, and over here I just give a little bit of vibrance, like nine or ten, something like that. Just kind of popping that color a little bit, um, just to give it a little bit of a, a little umph. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of color in it, so I don't want to push the saturation. But vibrance is always a nice way to kind of increase the the non sort of dominant colors and give them a little kick. Okay, and now I'm on to the, uh, the second tab, Creative tab, I've already done AI Sky Replacement. Over here, I wanna do Mystical, so I'm just gonna drag this to about 20 or 21. It adds a little bit of shadow, a little bit more contrast, which is another reason that it was good that on that previous 
filter tab or look uh, um, tools tab. I keep calling them filters. Oh man, it's got to be hard. Uh, but on that previous tab, essentials, where I lifted the shadows and then showed you how that compared to AI accent. Um, I lifted the shadows with AI accent, but that's a good thing because if I hadn't, when I'm adding mystical, if you notice, it kind of adds a little bit of shadow back. So there's before and there's after. It's not strong because I didn't go very far, but if I went really high, you'll see it starts to get a lot sh more shadow shadowier, shadowerish, whatever, more shadow uh, in the foreground. So I'm kind of going light. I think it was at like 21. I'm going to leave it there, just giving a little bit of that kind of romantic glow. And to me, this kind of scene just, just eats that up. Okay, and then I went over here to uh, color styles or LUTs, and I'm gonna choose a LUT. I'm actually gonna use cross-processing, um, which is something I used a lot in Luminar 3 and Luminar Flex. I absolutely adore that uh, group of sliders. They were a separate thing in previous versions, and now they're built into the LUT or color style um, tool here. So I'm gonna choose Geneva, and I gotta look at my notes. Yeah, I'm, I'm going pretty light, like a 15 or so. Uh, so pretty subtle, but if you look at the before and after, I think you can tell. So there's before. You can see it's a little bit warmer and a little bit brighter in the foreground. And after, it gives it overall a little bit more of that moodiness, a kind of that romantic glow, a little bit like Mystical did, but it also gave it a little bit more color, kind of that pinkish kind of color, which I think it goes well with the sunset. Geneva, I like to use. Seattle is another one that's down in here, and Seattle has uh, got a bit more purple in it, but um, I think it looks good with sunsets as well. Okay, and what's quickly becoming one of my favorite sliders is in the glow slider, this soft focus bright. And I'm going to about 15. If you look at the sky while I'm doing this, you can kind of see it brightens up a little bit. So let me turn that off. There's before. Sky's a little bit darker, and I think it fits with the scene. And then now after, I've added that soft focus bright. It does brighten that sky a little bit. It does the soft focus as the name implies, but it really seems to Im uh, impact the brighter parts of the photo more. Um, and I don't know, it just kind of looks good here. Brighten the sky a little bit, but it's generally speaking, it's really just taking the sky and saying, hey, you're a little bit dark and now you're a little bit brighter. I just liked it. Maybe something you try in some of your sunsets if you wanna add a little bit of exposure increase to the sky but without really increasing the exposure, maybe try Soft Focus Bright. I'm liking it. I've used it in a few videos. I've used it on a number of photos and uh, it's pretty cool. I'm happy that it's here. And then the last thing, I'm over here to the Pro tab and I'm gonna use Adjustable Gradient. I'm gonna set orientation and what I wanna do here, I'm gonna squeeze that down, kinda of collapse that. And then I also wanna drop it down. And all I'm gonna do is kinda of get this down uh, right around the line where the pavement meets the buildings. And I'll say done because I've set the orientation. So now it divides top and bottom. So top is going to be anything above the line and bottom will be anything below it. And all I'm going to do is take the vibrance down a little bit. So like maybe a negative 10 or 12 to 13, what am I at? Negative 12, just a tiny bit. I, you know, I felt like it was like, you know, if you go to the right, it's going to pick up a lot of kind of impact. And I kind of didn't want to do that. So um, I kind of wanted to bring it back a little bit. Um, I don't want to get... Uh, distracting the viewer's eye by having too much color. You kind of look at the the uh, the scene. I'm kind of drawn to this green building over here. I kind of go like that, and then I kind of go left, and then I kind of go back right across the sky. It's an empty foreground. I actually recommend that you find some kind of anchoring element in the foreground when you're shooting. There was nothing there, so I just shot it. Hence why I cropped a, a fair amount out of it and went 16 by nine because there was just too much empty space. Um, but that's really it, a quick, simple workflow, kind of a subtle sunset replacement, but I think it did a wonderful job. There's before and there's after. And of course you could experiment with the color tones and that sort of thing, but I wanted to show you, I mean, I think the sky replacement, people have asked me, hey, zoom in. And I've done that in some videos, but I'll continue to try to do it um, if I remember. But I mean, look at how good that uh, is in terms of that blend, even around that light. I mean, I just think that looks incredible. So. I think uh, the sky replacement, you know, as I've said in previous videos, it's not perfect. I've had, have had some photos where it doesn't even recognize the sky, and that's okay. Uh, and some where it doesn't perfectly get the sky, and that's okay too. You have tools in that, um, or you have sliders in that tool for sky replacement that allow you to massage things. I think it does an incredible job 90-something percent of the time, which is way better than I would do if I was doing it by hand myself. And might I add, seriously quicker, right? So 
Anyway, that's it one more time. There's the before and the after. Here's a little slider if you like. And now that I'm looking at it, I might go play with the colors a little bit more just because I like to. I'm gonna go have a little experimental fun. But I just wanted to show you that. I hope it gives you some ideas and inspiration and uh, maybe some things that you can work with on your own photos. And thanks for watching, my friends. I do appreciate it. I hope your day is going super awesome. I'll catch you real soon with more Luminar videos and other things. Have a good one, my friends. Take care. I'll see you later. And adios.